Trayvon Martin. His tragic death in a suburb of Orlando has become a giant story. In fact, it's become one of the biggest stories in the United States. And I normally don't cover uh, something that is uh, obviously being pushed by the establishment media because they never push something for the good of this republic. They always push things to distract and divert and divide this population so the foreign megabanks can play us off against each other. But it's important to cover this because we can illustrate uh, basically what the establishment is doing and the type of psychological warfare operation they've launched. But the secret of the Trayvon Martin case is this. Black men and black teenagers are shot and killed all the time in questionable circumstances. And when it does happen, I'm here covering it. Remember a few years ago? The uh, black teen got shot in the back by the police, and I said day one it was a cover-up, and later the video got released. Notice you didn't see the president involved in that. You didn't see that becoming a big issue because that was seen as the government. They don't want to turn the people against the government. But when it's a citizen killing a citizen and it's racial, the guy's part Hispanic, white, uh, Mr. Zimmerman, then Jesse Jackson comes out, then Al Sharpton, then the president. Al Sharpton says, do you want violence like a threat? as if burning down inner cities is going to help black people. Uh, Jesse Jackson says, you know, people are out to get black folks. In fact, the quote is, let me pull it up right here, blacks are under attack. Hey, Jesse, they're under attack by AFRICOM, our military controlled by the globalists in Africa. And they're being lined up and killed genocide style in Libya after Gaddafi was thrown out. Oh, but you and Sharpton aren't talking about that because your establishment hacks. You know, Jesse Jackson, I've talked to top black leaders, civil rights leaders and others. Jesse Jackson 30 years ago would talk about how 50 plus percent of blacks were aborted and how the Planned Parenthood agenda was racist. He doesn't talk about that now. You know, the first thing Obama did on getting in office, the first thing he did, and I wish Jesse Jackson would talk about things like this. The first thing he did was take the restrictions off to fund abortion in Africa, where it's basically forced abortion because they won't give people any financial help unless they have abortions or get sterilized. Oh, but you don't want to talk about Obama doing that. No, no, no. Use a case uh, where we don't know what's going on, where some guy follows somebody, which I think is stupid, and then shoots them, and uh, use that to create all this tension. Now, there's a witness that's in the police reports who's now talked to the local TV station saying that all he knows is the guy in the red shirt, and that was Zimmerman, was basically down on the ground with Martin on top of him. And that's in the report. I'm not taking sides. I, I think what Zimmerman did was probably stupid. Uh, and it's going to be used to attack the Second Amendment. I'm all for castle laws to defend yourself in your house and if somebody's on your property at night. But it is a case by case if they're just on the edge of your property at night and the guy shouldn't have followed him. I think that's stupid. I want to be clear about that. But again, why is this being used now? Well, Obama four years ago promised people free houses and free cars and all their problems would be solved when he worked for Goldman Sachs, the same folks that ran Bush and that now run Romney. Now he's not going to promise you all that. Now he can say it's like his son and personalize it and feed off of all this. So that's what I'm talking about right here. And one other point I want to make is that Kurt Nemo wrote an article that I asked him to write a few days ago dealing with all of this. And he simply pointed out that Obama was using it for a political distraction. And all these people claiming to be black were calling us racist and calling me a racist. And you know what? That doesn't work on me. I don't have any white guilt. I don't dislike black people because of the color of their skin. Okay? I dislike ignorant people, no matter what color they are, hating me for the color of my skin or where I'm from or my religion. And the FBI crime statistics that Kurt Nemo put in his article, Obama shamelessly exploits death of Trayvon Martin, in that report, he gives the government's own numbers that depending on what year and what area, blacks are five to 12 times more likely to attack whites. And there's endless videos of it from surveillance cameras online where they're beating up an old white man and saying, you know, white, you deserve it. I've seen black leaders uh, in the news down in Houston say, don't mug blacks in your area, go mug whites. Look, just because you think I'm a white devil, there's not open season on me and my family. 
And that type of action is going to make people paranoid and it's going to cause people to actually go after folks that don't deserve it. Okay? So I stand against police brutality. I stand against people that go after blacks, you know, driving while black. You know, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, have a lot of black friends, but I'm not going to sit here and kiss butt and say I'm bad and then you're allowed to put out all your racist music and say I'm trash and say I'm garbage and it's supposed to be cute. Okay? That's not going to help bring people together. That's going to divide and conquer, and that's exactly what the system wants. So it makes me sick. You can go read Curtin Mo's article, Obama shamelessly exploits the death of Trayvon Martin, which he certainly has done. Uh, now continuing here, let me pull up a few more uh, of these articles. Again, there's the one, Witness Martin Attack Zimmerman. And then there's the Drudge Report. And then there's this report. Remember this one? Spokesman, officer in subway shooting, has resigned and ended up going to jail. And they got caught lying and saying this guy right here had resisted the police when he hadn't. He was in handcuffs when they shot him in the back. And I covered that at nauseum, whether they're black or white, Hispanic, I don't care. I am against injustice. Now, here's some of the other reports. Look at this. I've been promoting this, having guests on about real black genocide in America in the 20th and 21st century. It's ongoing. MAFA 21. Okay? I have the guest on. I break this down. I have the black pastors on. They're actually trying to stop blacks from aborting their babies. Millions of dead black babies is a bigger deal than one guy shot, and we don't know what happened. Why isn't Obama making a deal out of that? Because the system, the eugenicist, if you go back 80 years ago, 90 years ago now, with Margaret Sanger and others, the letters are public, with the Rockefeller Foundation said, blacks are subhuman, we got to kill them, but we got to pose as liberals, get them on welfare, break up their families, because we got to pose as their friends so we can really get control of them and destroy them. Deal the drugs in their neighborhood, you know, all that was decided. I get it. But now that the black community is super screwed up, just like all other communities are, but blacks have had it done the worst to them, we've got to come together and lift up all of humanity, not let the system play people off against each other. So this is bottom line, a diversion and a distraction, and I'm sick of it, and this will make whites get more paranoid and only stick together. It'll make blacks get more paranoid. I'm just mad at the mindless emotionalism and, and, and everybody protesting and getting mad. Why don't you protest about what happened six years ago in New York? It was in New York Daily News where they would take black children from their parents and test chemicals and biologicals on them. But that's in the news. Nobody seemed to care about that. I mean, I mean, why don't you talk about poor blacks joining the military and then breathing DU and getting sick and dying? Or having experimental vaccines or, or Tuskegee or all the stuff that's still ongoing. No, you'll only get mad when you get told to get mad. And that's what makes me really, really sick. And that's the secret of what's really happened here with Mr. Martin. Uh, is that it is just a cynical system. I mean, just type in blacks attack whites into YouTube and then go look at the crime statistics. And again, why is this done? Because there's a view that whites deserve it, that whites are bad. I mean, you watch this video, this old white man just being pulled out of his car and beaten and all the stuff they're saying. I mean, I can't even play it here. And there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And people saying, well, you deserve it because you're white. You deserve to get your head beat in like Reginald Denny driving his truck through, you know, after the uh, thing happened with uh, Rodney King. Well, whites are going to get paranoid, and then sometimes they're going to get scared, and innocent people are going to get hurt. Instead of blacks and whites killing each other, how about we come together against the New World Order, okay? And let's call for real justice in this case. I'm not saying the police could be wrong. They could be. I mean, I've seen them shoot somebody in the back and lie about it later and say the person attacked them. But... When Obama and the whole system's behind it, you better know it's being used as a way to drive a wedge through the heart of this country. I'm Alex Jones reporting from the front lines of InfoWars.com. I'll be covering this more tomorrow on the Sunday radio show, 4 to 6 p.m. If you don't have a local affiliate in your area, InfoWars.com, free audio streams. Let's all come together and think through this and not be emotional and manipulated.